Hello. In this demo, we take a look at a hybrid IT scenario. Banzai has been using Centrify Server Suite for some time now to secure access to their data center servers. However, they're now standing up workloads in the cloud and they want to accomplish three specific things. One is to centrally manage their new Linux instances from Active Directory in exactly the same way they manage their data center servers with the Centrify Server Suite today. Number two, they want to leverage the Centrify Privilege Service to provide secure remote login to these new AWS Linux instances. And thirdly, they want to automate the creation of AWS Linux instances along with joining them to AD, enrolling them in the Centrify Privilege Service, creating local Linux accounts and registering them with the Centrify Privilege Service, and finally, enabling login to those Linux instances using AD accounts through the new Centrify Identity Broker without having to replicate any of their on-premises AD infrastructure. This slide is a summary of the steps you're going to see. You can pause the video to review them at any time. Okay, for this demonstration, we're gonna be using three browser sessions and a couple of terminal windows. This tab on the browser, we're logged into the EC2 management console. We're gonna launch our instance from there. In the other tab, we're logged into the Centrify Privilege Service as our demonstration user, Claude Consultant. And we have a third browser window, an incognito window, where we're logged into the Privilege Service as the cloud administrator. Here we see the two terminal windows. The one on the right we're gonna be using for the demonstration. In the one on the left, I'm just showing you the file. This is the script file we're going to use in order to automate some of the setup and configuration of our Linux instance in AWS. Okay, here we are back in the management console. Let's create a new instance. We'll choose an existing AMI, a Red Hat Enterprise Linux AMI, and we'll size it at the medium size, seeing as this is just a demo. Next, we'll configure it. We can pretty much leave these options as is, but down at the bottom is what we're interested in. This is where we can specify some commands to be run automatically to configure this instance. We could type them into the box, but as, we, as you saw earlier, we have a file that we've already created. So we'll select that radio button, and now we'll choose the file from the disk. We'll navigate to it, there it is. We'll select it, and we'll click Open. Moving on then, let's add some storage. Uh, 100 gigabytes is gonna be enough for this. And now we'll name our new Linux instance. We'll call it Hybrid Cloud Demo Linux. Next, we'll configure a security group. I've already got a number of security groups set up, so we'll select one of those. And let's review and we'll launch it. Now we have to specify uh, a key pair which we've created previously and now we'll launch the instance. Okay, let's go to our list of instances now. Here you'll see at the top is the hybrid cloud demo Linux instance. It'll take a little while for it to come up. You can see the instance state is pending. If I right click on that, what we want to do is we want to be able to connect to it over SSH. The connect option is grayed out because it's not yet in a running state. That should just take a few seconds and once it's running we'll be able to select that option. And there it is. So let's connect to that. We don't actually connect to it through AWS. What we do is we use an SSH command that they've nicely provided for us. We'll copy that and then we'll go over to our terminal session and we will paste that in in order to remotely SSH to our new instance. Now it may not be able to connect initially, it takes a little while for the stack to become available. So you'll probably see here that it will be refused. We'll speed up the video and eventually we'll get to a stage where the stack is up, it's responding to us and we're able to log in. And there we are, we're now logged into our remote Linux instance. Let's move over to our temporary folder, which is where we're actually logging all of our automation through that script, and we'll tail that log file. So here you can see we're going through the log file. We're actually doing a yum install of some of the dependent components of our installation. Uh, there's Perl, for example. 
and there's the Centrify software. So we're pulling that down, we're now installing the Centrify software and we're running it. Here you'll see now we're enrolling in the cloud or the Centrify identity platform. And now what we're doing is we're, we've created a local account, we're vaulting it, we're registering it, and we're giving it a set of permissions that will allow us to remotely log in to that using our demonstration user, Claude Consultant. Okay, let's see if we can log in now as Claude Consultant through the privileged service. Let's reload. And there we see the new Linux instance is listed in the resources list. Let's select that and look at the accounts. Hopefully our local account has been created and registered, and there it is. So let's see if we can log in as Claude Banzai IT, the local account on our new Linux instance. Let's go back to resources, right click, and select account actions. Well, it looks like we can't directly log in, but we can request a login. That's because part of our automation established workflow-based access request. So let's submit that request. And now what we'll do is we'll go over to our approver, which is the cloud admin. So we're logged in as cloud admin. Let's go to the requests tab. And there we see a pending request. So that's our workflow request. Click on that. There's the context of the request. Let's approve it. And we'll give Claude 10 minutes to get his job done. We submit that. Let's go back now to Claude's login. And if we right click again on the Linux resource and go to account actions, we see request login is now changed to a login button. So by clicking on that, we get secure remote access to our brand new AWS Linux instance. Logged in as the local account. Now, as I mentioned at the beginning, we also want to enable remote login to that Linux instance using our existing AD credentials. So here I'm going to log in to the privileged service as another user, Teresa Uber IT. And she's going to navigate to her resources tab. And there we should see the new Linux instance. There it is. If we right click on that and select account actions, you'll see she doesn't have direct access. She has to make workflow based requests, but she should be able to log into that instance using her existing AD credentials. And there we see her AD account from the list. TARDIS.com is the AD domain. And if she selects login, then she should be given a login session using her own AD account. And there it is. If we do a grep for Teresa in Etsy password, we'll confirm here that there is no local account for that user. But if we do get ent, you'll see there is the account. It's a TARDIS.com account. So let's exit from here and verify that that is indeed an AD account. Let's go back to resources and we'll click on the domain controller here and we'll log in as administrator. So again, we're using the privileged service for remote login to that Windows server. We'll run users and computers. And in ADUC, if we go to the users container, we'll see there an entry for Teresa Consultant. There she is, Teresa Consultant at TARDIS.com. Verification that she was able to log in using her AD credentials. So to summarize, you can quite easily automate the creation and the configuration of your Linux instances using user data and scripts, as I showed here, or Chef, Puppet, Oxworks, whatever your favorite orchestration tool. In the process, you can leverage Centrify to join your instances to AD, to enroll them in the Centrify identity platform, to vault critical accounts and passwords along with necessary permissions for secure remote access, enable workflow for workflow-based approval, and with Identity Broker, you can enable login using existing AD credentials without having to replicate your AD infrastructure in the cloud.